So, folks, now some of you might recall that over the, like the last several weeks, um, there there's been a library, uh, or, or rather several schools, libraries, librarians, teachers, etc. across the country who've been receiving anonymous bomb threats. There was uh, there there was like a school that had to close down for like several days a couple weeks ago um just really wild stuff and yeah after the libs of tiktok stuff yeah now it turns out that you know one or two bomb threats might go under the radar but when you start shutting down schools for like a week or two at a time because they're getting so many bomb threats Turns out that even though our law enforcement is very tech averse, they do have some means to try to uh, track down culprits. And it turns out that the FBI has now tracked down a major lead in uh, who might be behind all of these bomb threats. Uh, and this comes to us courtesy of the Daily Beast. FBI has a major lead in tracking down bomb threat hoaxer. Um, Detective Robert Onishi of the Renton Police Department in Washington is the lead investigator on an emailed threat that claimed bombs had been placed at the Brewmaster's Tap Room, a local Renton business, and the owner's home on August 12th. The threat led to the business being forced to cancel a planned Drag Queen story hour. Threats were also sent to the same, the same day to other businesses, including a boutique in Peekskill, New York. Onishi is briefed, uh, was briefed by a local FBI agent on the ongoing investigation into the threats, he says. He was told the communications have been traced back to an IP address registered uh, with Afrinic, the regional internet registry for Africa. The feds have also identified the type of phone and the emails are being sent from, an Android device that is mainly marketed in Africa and Southeast Asia, Onishi said. The phone's time zone, which you'd expect is probably not spoofed, appears to be in Africa with a longitude uh, consistent with Lagos, Nigeria, Onishi said. Onishi said that the threat against the taproom in Renton originates overseas, and there's little that he can do. The difficulty that I would run into is that we, don't, we just don't have the reach. We can't get any judicial authority to compel a search of records for an overseas provider. So I'm kind of stymied, Onishi said. Aww. I was going to take the night off, but we need to get this party started. B B B B B B B B B B B B B W W W W W W W W W W A A Triple A A A Triple A Triple A Quadruple A Quadruple A. Thank you very much for the five gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paladin. And uh, that brings us to ma makeup. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. That, that's that's you unlocked makeup. Um, thank you so goddamn much. The Daily Beast reviewed 35 of the email bomb threats that are currently under investigation. They were cc'd to Alejandra Caraballo, an instructor at Harvard Law School, who is also a predominant advocate for LGBT rights. These threats, many of which target LGBT events, were sent to school district libraries, community groups, and businesses across the United States. A series of threats sent to schools in Tulsa, Oklahoma, shut down the city's school district for two weeks, leaving thousands of students out of school. Carabayo has been uh, operating, cooperating with the FBI for months, but has felt frustrated that the feds have not been able to stop the culprit from disrupting lives. Yeah. Both Detective Onishi and Carabayo speculated about the identity of the sender or senders of the threats, wondering if it could be someone hired to disrupt the lives of Americans in the run-up to the election. I can't explain why a random person in Lagos would otherwise care this much, Carabayo said. It would not be the first time a foreign power has hired individuals in Nigeria to spread disinformation. In 2019, a Russian troll farm was uncovered for the first time in West Africa, according to The Guardian. A uh, Gahanian nonprofit hired a group of, uh, or Gahanian? Uh, Gahanians and Nigerians to pretend to be Americans online and stoke political division on Facebook and Twitter. 
Uh, the people behind this network engaged in a number of deceptive tactics, including the use of fake accounts to manage pages posing as non-government organizations or personal blogs and posting groups, Nathaniel Glacier, Facebook's head of security policy at the time, told The Guardian. So, there is a not insignificant chance here that the reason we are seeing this mass of bomb threats uh targeting LGBTQ events or uh, places or people is because there is moneyed interest to disrupt that and spread a, a larger in larger impression of kind of the danger or the extremism at work in America, which is very interesting, admittedly. Um, who might have interest in doing so? I mean, it could be it could be Russia. Uh, funding that, that that's certainly possible my money would be not necessarily on russia though i don't think russia necessarily has a ton of interest in trying to stoke that division um if anything i i would i would wager it's probably an extension of china's hacking efforts um and cyber cyber attack efforts um i mean if we're if we're just in full speculation mode right um China has been making uh, coordinated cyber attacks on different parts of like infrastructure, both in the United States and abroad, and it would make sense for them to be branching out and seeing how they could use um, and leverage different social divisions for some type of benefit, right? Russia is always a bit busy. Yeah, Russia is a bit busy. Yeah. So I, I would say... It, I think it's, I mean, if I, if you put a gun to my head, I would say it's Chinese efforts to um, stoke division. But again, I don't know. No one knows. We're probably not going to know anytime soon. But this is, uh, this is pretty interesting, I think. Could be a VPN they're using. Uh, it could be, but they're tracing it based on the time zone of the phone, uh, of the device that's sending most of these threats. So the VPN probably doesn't change the time zone of the device. I think I think they've pretty clearly like locked down the uh, location, even even with any VPN protection, which they almost certainly have. Um, I like my Nigerian prince theory. That, that, would, be, that would be funny. I think it's smarter to just pay someone in Africa. Right? I, I mean, like, the people in Africa, like, there, there are tech, tech outfits in Africa that are very capable of doing stuff like this, you know? I don't think they necessarily need to uh, need to like cover their identities um, all that much, considering law enforcement is almost certainly never going to be able to bring them to justice. Um, a mechanical Turk situation, probably. <laughs> 